Good afternoon. Welcome again to another edition of My Life in Parts. And everyone's life has different parts, from the time you're born to the time you die. And that thing in between is your life and your story should be told. Today, I have Bernard Franklin. Musical, extraordinaire, brilliant. He'll be telling us his life in parts in three parts, the past, the present, the future, and there'll be an interlude. So without much ado, Bernard Franklin. <laughs> uh, Tell us about you. Where do I start? Where do I start? From the beginning. Uh, okay, my name is Bernard Franklin. I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, a producer, a recording stroke performing artist. I'm a Christian. And how did it start? Well, it's, it's from trying to pinpoint how to put this story so that is 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 <laughs> you know. But yeah, I'm so I think I discovered I could sing at age five. Although when I when, when my when I was two three, my dad got like a Michael Jackson album that time Thriller. Yeah, you know that was like my first exposure to music. All things figured out, yes It's okay So say I'm not okay, yes It's okay, yo oh. To be vulnerable once in a while It's okay To have those tears fall down, oh yes don't beat yourself too much Nobody has it figured out All of us, they try All of us, they try Give yourself some slack Cut yourself some slack, yeah will fall in line Just hold on, yes See as culture teaches otherwise Tell you It's not okay to be weak It's not okay to be weak yes. It's not okay to not have answers But let me tell you something You will have a lot of unanswered questions and it's okay Excellent, excellent Amazing, amazing Oh, that was the first time, right? Amazing, amazing We love it, we love it uh, And from what you told us, it's actually okay And this is to the men and even the women out there It's okay to be vulnerable Okay. It's okay to not have all the answers okay. Do not be ashamed of who you are because who you are is an inspiration to someone else out there. So nice one. It's okay. Tell us more. Deep down inside, I, I, if it wasn't music, there was not a, nothing else that made sense to me. I wasn't Christian at the time. But I just, I just enjoyed going to church because there were a lot of people there singing and everything. But I think I started meeting people that were really good at it. Mm. And I started doubting myself. I was a young boy. My dad was hardly around. So it was just me and my mom with my twin. Figuring out life, I was I was learning on on the job. <laughs> 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 that, that, that. Learning it, life, yeah, learning life on the job because <laughs> my dad was not really there to be that father figure. Father figure, he he if he had the opportunity he would, he would but, but because of work and everything, he was always not available. So I was learning to be a man on my own, which didn't go well. 
right? Said discovering I could, I could be in places where people are like be a man. I'm like I don't understand what, what it that means, means to be a man. Do you understand? And it didn't make sense. My father would come back and start shouting at me. I'm, so one day I told him that why are you shouting? You were never here to teach me, and you're shouting at what you didn't teach me. Mm. It didn't make sense to me. I'm like relax. I'm learning. If there's something I'm not doing, correct me. Don't raise your voice. So I, I didn't have the bonus before, <laughs> of course, <laughs> African parents. I learned <laughs> boldness. Yeah. So I started learning being a man Without from you. culture, which is wrong, which is, which I didn't know God the Father. I, mm. I knew culture as the Father. Mm. You know, so I was learning the wrong things, how to be able to treat lady, how to be able to be that emotional support. I was learning things on my own. What does culture say on how to raise a lady? How to raise how, how to, how be, to a be a man. man yes. So there is, About with a lady, for instance. There is this um, cultural perception that vulnerability is weakness. Hmm. Right? Don't be vulnerable. Don't you're not, cry. Yeah, don't, don't cry. Show Be, weakness. Don't show weakness. But we are human. Hmm. It's okay to be vulnerable. There's power in vulnerability. Hmm. Just like my life in parts. Because I'm going to say some things, right? And in my lead, that's why I have this here. <laughs> get, get me, but I wasn't used to this. I was always used to bottling things up. So I was dealing with stuff on my own the wrong way. Hmm. Do you understand? So, I was not used to that. And culture says there's a whole lot of people that they don't know how to express emotions. Mm. They don't know how to express emotions. They feel like, ah. so people now know that I have an addiction problem. Mm. <laughs> a lot of people have an addiction problem. See, once I, I became at peace with understanding and knowing that no one has it all figured out. Mm. There are moments that shifted me. One, of, one was when... My dad started being around, okay. you know, but I saw him in a different light. He started to get sick. And I think the person that has been so strong, every time I see him, he's so strong. So the first time I saw him cry was when, I think somewhere in 2004, mm. when I was diagnosed with diabetes, when I diagnosed him with diabetes. And you know, at the point where he has been seeing his money go down <laughs> because of his health and everything. And the work at, at the time was not allowing him that freedom to freedom. He was always sitting down, trying to, you know, work and everything, trying to get money. But even the money, we're not even seeing it because... He was going for his health? Yes. And that was the first time that I saw him cry hmm. with my mom. He was, he was wailing. Like, this is my life now. Wow. And it shook me. Wow. It shook me. Ah, it hit me. It hit me so much. I was like, oh, God. So I, I started cutting him some slack because I also saw that he was struggling. Hmm. Right? Ah, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, Bernard, don't do this. <laughs> I made mistakes, but they don't define me. I lost my shame, but I'm okay now. I've been bruised, bruised and abused, but one thing is for sure. Forward and never look back. The 
So, said, so, although I was angry at him for not being around, for not teaching me, for making me go through some things on my own, but somewhere inside I was like, man, this guy too is also finding his path. You know, I should relax. Because I struggled with addictions a lot. And I didn't know who to talk to. There were things that I didn't, there were ladies in class that I liked, but I didn't know how to approach them. I wanted somebody to guide me, you know. My uncle was there, he was trying, but he was a young guy too, so. I didn't have that father figure, I didn't know how, what it was. And also later, I discovered that it was actual culture that was putting that tension mm. on what culture has made being a man to be. Mm. Right? So, it didn't, a lot of things were beginning to make sense later, but at the time it looked like my whole world was you know, so when I was struggling with addictions, when I was dealing with, I don't know how to be able to approach the other, you know, gender, how to be able to deal with feelings, you know, what it means to be able to have financial intelligence, you know. So when he was not around, he was now weak. Mm. He barely. So how were you able to, you know, because that shifted you, you know touched you so much. Yeah. It galvanized you and what was the next thing? It actually propelled me to be on my own the more. Hmm. Because the person I was I wanted to talk to was not there, there emotionally. For you. He was there physically but not, but there not emotionally and I had matured out of that space. That space. I was used to dealing with 
things on my own, right? So, and also he was very judgy. Mm. So he didn't help it. He didn't help a lot. So I was like, oh, I bet for my matter become <laughs> family talk because the small one that they knew, they couldn't handle Already, it. Already, yeah. Because at the point, at the point, I, I picked up smoking. So one day they did um, money devotion for me. Everybody just came. It was like an intervention. Yeah. So somebody, somebody had reported to my dad that they saw me somewhere smoking, right? So money devotion. And my dad was there. My, had, my dad was hardly present for money devotion. It was, it, so, but he was around. Okay. My sister was there. My mom was there. After money devotion, my father was crying. I like, okay, well, what's he say? <laughs> Why are you smoking? I'm like, <laughs> that <Jesus. laughs> was. I told him that I was just testing it. It's not me and you. Know, yeah. right? <laughs> I was just testing it. I just tested it, you know. But he didn't stop. I continued. Obviously, more careful now so that they don't catch me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, dealing with addictions, I now graduated into porn at age six. Stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you meant 16. Six. No, no, wait. Oh, yeah, six. Six. Yeah, I remember my parents were not at home, so the first, my cousin brought stuff and put it on there. Was this, I've not seen this before. And then I liked it because it was new. It was a new experience. So, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> the ages. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because... I don't know what I was at six. I, well, I, I remember at age I... two, sir. Really? Yeah. Okay, so at six, your, your cousin brought this and you knew that this is what you liked. Uh, it was good. It was fun to enjoy seeing people do stuff on TV. Okay. So I told him to bring another one. Let's try it. Let's, let's see what it will be. It was like movie to me at first. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently he graduated, obviously. I remember that at age two, I was harassed. Nobody knows this. This is, this is Serious? first. Yeah by the maid that we had at the time. You know, she would like touch me in funny places, but it was later the point started making sense, sense to me. About from what that uh, okay. Like, ah, okay, so this is what she was trying to do. Because I, I was just there, she was just doing what she was doing. Right, so I was like, ah, okay. Ah, that's about, oh, wow, I like it. You know, I didn't like it, I was just traumatized. Yeah. So it led to other things. This is where my dad wasn't at home. So one time my father actually saw one of the <laughs> should I say this on camera? <laughs> no, just share with us. Share Don't with us. let him see this. <laughs> he won't. Because I lied. <laughs> I lied. <clears throat> so I was watching porn and I I slept off. <laughs> and then he came. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I was watching porn and I slept off. Yeah. And wow. He came into the room trying to watch his Something, normal, yeah. and what he saw was not good. Yeah. At two a.m. or so, he, hey, everybody. so I was confused because I was, you know, when you just woke up from, from sleep, sleep. trying You're to not process. Coordinate, yeah. yeah, you know, like what's this? And now don't. Hey, I didn't remove the CD. Time was CD. Shifted the blame straight to my cousin. Straight I don't, away. I don't know what he put there. And my cousin knows because he's the one that started the whole... In the first place. So I told him, you have to take this one. <laughs> for the team. For the team. <laughs> you have to take this for the team. So he was flogged mercilessly. Ah. Wow. You can still remember it. Yeah. It was fl- ah, it was flogged. But it didn't, it didn't still stop. Because this, this addiction continued till age. Active addiction till 16. Serious. So for 10 years, I was actively addicted to porn. Other times it was on off, on off, on off, on off, on off, on off. But yeah, addiction. Then masturbation started at age 11 or age 10. I think age 11 one time. Age 11, 10, thereabouts. And it continued. <laughs> hey, continue, man. The way you stretch that continue. Ah, at the point, I. Oh, uh, guy. <laughs> you know where you're tired, and you, but you're tired of. You can't stop, you're tired. Of being so, and boy, I took a Bible and I cursed myself. For that cursed what, brother? Hmm. If it's by cursing yourself, that you stop. <laughs> really? Thank God that cause did not work because even after that day, I cursed myself. It still happened. Serious. So the only thing that made me not timid was music. Hmm. 
But aside mm-hmm. music, like I don't know, I'm I'm nobody. I lost confidence in the voice and gained confidence in who God made me. Mm. That I was loved regardless of what it was that I thought myself to be. Mm. That everything I believed before that time was a mirage. It's not reality. That my confidence and my identity is not in things or perceptions. It's what he has said concerning me in his song. Hmm. I'd like you based on this new realization of who you are and what he's done. Don't tell me to see you yes. <laughs> I am love regardless of how I feel. I am loved by God, my creator, yeah. He calls me son, I call him father. He says I'm loved and he is good. I am loved, regardless of how I feel, yeah, yeah. My identity is in him, and all he's done for me. Christ is my perfection, I don't need to fear. You always come through for me, yeah I love you, you love me But your love is more than I could fathom Oh yeah, yeah. I am loved by you I am loved by you Yeah, yeah, yeah I am loved by you <laughs> Don't save me up there. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Don't save me up Can I tell you something? Do you know that when you're singing, I am loved by you, it actually translates. As in, even now, years later, you're singing it, but it still translates. You can feel how you felt when you realized. Yes. And that's why. 2012 was a very significant year for me. That's when it all began to come together. Tell us from there what happened. So I don't know, but I was in a very deep place. I just finished school at the time, and I didn't know what to do with my life. Do why, 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 why it looks like the world? <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. And then I finished, and I was like, okay, I'm done. What's next? University didn't really look good to me. I was tired of school at the time, because even in SS3 at the time, I was like, I'm tired of this reading within. It's not, it's Which not the um, Adventist Secondary Technical College or Renta, Aztec. Okay. I was tired of school. So when I was done, I was like, oh God, so what next? And I felt really empty. Hmm. I felt really empty, really, really empty. So my sister at the time was like, let's go to where we came from. I was in the north. I was living in the north. She went to the north, I didn't go with her. She was angry at Later she told me that she, she was really heartbroken, that I didn't follow her. Because I had not been separated from my twin for that long. Hmm. And we were always doing life together. So she left for school. I didn't go with her. I still stayed back. And that's when I became born again. Because hmm. she was like my, she's like my support system. You know, that person that I, but she was far away now. And I didn't know who else to deal with my parents with, <laughs> you know. Because any time anytime that they do stuff, it's she that, you know, but now she's away, so I have, like, really empty. And I didn't know what to do with my life at the time. So I became born again in 2012. I won't forget that day, 19th of October. For real? It was a Thursday evening. Wow! I won't forget. <laughs> <laughs> when my friend walked into my house and... She started telling me about Christ in a way that I had not heard before. Yeah. So did the friend just show up or? He just showed up out of the From blues. nowhere. And actually, I was the first person he ever spoke to about Serious. Christ. Serious. He, he, he had just. Orchestrated. Yes. He, had, he, he just became born again, I think, a week before that time. Or, or so. so he was too. He was still. Yeah. And he, he was like, I have to tell Frank about this. He came and I was like, wow. I've not, I've not heard it. Like, I've been singing in church. Mind you, I have been singing in church, but not this way. Not the consciousness of God's love. It's mm. not, it didn't hit me that much. 
huge. So I was like, wow, God is actually detailed about me. It was later that everything started, be, everything started to play out, right? Everything started to make sense. How my dad was. So I, I, I began to see my dad not from a place of anger and bitterness because he was also learning to do life. He had never mm. been a father. He had never been a father. I was his first. So he, he was learning to be a father with me. You. It was different. Yeah. The same with my mom. If they knew better, they would have done better. better. But I, it didn't make sense to me at the time. Yeah. It was later that I began to see fatherhood in God. Hmm. And it altered a lot of things in my head. So my confidence in the voice shifted. So the voice was not my identity anymore. It was a tool, hmm. not the essence. So I, that's how I began to see everything that concerned me. So my solace, even when life wasn't going as much as it was, was I am loved by Christ. That's perfect. That regardless of how I felt, it was not just about me. So, But it didn't break through into addiction because I was still battling with that. So it didn't make sense to me. That I know God loved me, but this one still yeah, go on. Yeah. Alpha, if you say you've released me, Alpha, this one, I've, this one, shape the, the blood, cover this one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So the addiction went on. It became stronger, actually. And the sense of guilt increased. In, ah, God. So, wait, when you gave your life and the music went down, what about your relationship with women? How did that? I started doing friends with benefits. Yeah, we will reach an agreement. So this is what it is. Can't pass this line. Yeah, because I wasn't comfortable with commitment at the time. Because mm. I, 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 I didn't see how I would be in it. One, ah, you know, one person is it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. This is still me trying to find myself. Because if you understand that God loves you and is committed to you regardless of how you are, and you understand that the love that you have is not yours, mm. it's His. Commitment is not an issue. Wow. Because it's not your love. Wow. The love you're giving is supplied. No, no, see that thing you, know, you just said now <laughs> has helped. You understand? Really? Yes, that the love is not yours. So many people, because there's a saying that you can't give what you don't have. So because they don't have it, they feel ah, so it's the consciousness, the consciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. is that we So you through. just said it now that it's not yours to give. You collect and just your reflection. Yeah. Uh, love as you have been loved. I'm almost tempted. <laughs> <laughs> no, but carry on, carry on. Don't stop. Don't do it again. <laughs> so that consciousness came later on. So it was good that I was alone. God, it was good. You know, I it didn't make sense to me, but I tried to hang boots and say I'm not doing it again. Let me focus on my life and ministry. So these these are I'm trying to pick out the parts they yeah play. because it's not life in whole it's life in yeah, parts right. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so um with the ladies it wasn't good it was just benefit and we move but i was trying to feel a void that they couldn't feel what about economics like how, how are you make where you start make money other things other than than music and yeah yeah, yeah. The money part I've struggled with for the longest. <laughs> I went to your. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the longest because how should I say this now? So my dad obviously was health and all that, so the money was going to his health. I wasn't seeing the money before, but when the money started to now, it was now going to his health. Like, ugh. so it made me angry at him the most. Didn't you know that you will be having this uh-uh. issue? Why are you making me go through this stress? You have tried for every other person, but now is now time to, you know, but it now looks like the money you can do, you know. But there's something that he said to me. He said, I spent my youthful years, I spent my, my youthful years building another man's estate than focusing on my empire. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Okay. That man doesn't know when he does these things. <laughs>
for the sake of love you gave Only for the sake of love you gave Your son, your very life to me So that I, I might have you forever Now I'm yours forever Nothing is taking me out of your place, yes You are forever with me Nothing is taking me out, yeah Not my weakness Not the imperfections, yes Not anything born Own born can take me out of your love Out of your love You gave your son to me, yes Now I'm yours forever Yours forever, nothing is taking me out, yes I love you, but Cause you first loved me And you taught me how to love you Bye. Thank you for loving me, oh yeah You are intentional with me, God Very intentional with me, God I love you forever You've loved me forever Nothing can take away this consciousness from me You have become my everything Everything, everything, God I think I'm done Yeah <laughs> oh, Excellent, excellent, absolutely yeah. oh, God, So I went to school I left Nigeria because I was born again at the time, so then I now decided to now focus on I left song. I I did I forgot I could sing self. It's God there. I forgot I could sing. I was just I was I was so in love with prayer and study and fellowship that I forgot that I could sing. Mm. Literally. But they started pushing me to the choir and the time and all that and I did not be why I become Christian. I, I enjoyed this relationship because I've never had it. Hmm. So I wanted more of talking with God, being in that space and everything. They pushed me to join choir. I joined the choir. One time I led worship one time. It was an overflow of my relationship with God. With God. At the time. So I was just in that space. Okay, let me just bring these people into this experience. And a lot of things happened. happened. For the it was <laughs> For the first time ever, I opened my eyes and a lot of people were in tears, crying. So we were coming to the altar, you know, and we're like, oh, wow. So oh, oh wow. So I can do this. But it wasn't even me. But this is me also struggling with addiction at the time. I was saying some things that, you know, we shake some tables, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. So I started doing that more often, leading worship. And then that thing again. Started happening. I started getting an identity again mm. in, in leading that. worship. I didn't even know till later when they ne- when they don't give me my I start getting angry. Um, yeah. When people are not in church and they say she lead worship, I'm like, what's this? People are not I'm around. There, so what am what I doing for? You know. So it was later that when I when I had left Nigeria, I went to Ghana at the time. That something started making sense to me that. It's not about you or them. Hmm. Even when there are few, Christ has died for those few. Hmm. Then the money part, hmm, the struggle. Because when I went to school, my mom gave me all the promises that would put you through school. Don't worry, just go live here because I was in a home jam and jamming. We are jamming each other. I wasn't able to go to school because of jam and all that. So I went. I left. I went to Ghana. Ghana. And all, oh, and then my my father broke down. Completely. Yes, he really broke down. Like he couldn't do it again. He was literally wanting to die. Mm. So they rushed him out of the house. And that rushing out of the house was like the next two years. I didn't see him. Nobody saw him. For real. Yeah, nobody saw him. He was bedridden somewhere. No worry, I don't know where. I still don't know the place. But I didn't want to accept the reality that I will not be able to go to school again because of his health. Until one day, it dawned on me that 
there's no money to take care of you in this in this country that they sent you to. Ha. It was not it was not a good feeling to know that you were dropping out mm. in another man's country. And that's when things started happening. Today is what? Today is 28th. Today is 28th of May. Yeah. This date is significant. I just realized. For real. Wow. <laughs> God. It's I'll tell you why. Coincidence. Jesus Christ. Amanda. <laughs> it's, it's not coincidence, I'm telling you. And this thing you're about to say now is going to affect someone. Wow. Life. This is May 28th. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Jesus. One minute. God. God. Today marks May 28th is a very significant date for me. The very first time about that trying. Wow, this is good. And May 28th, two things. First is, it's a significant date in my music career and also in my finances. The very first time that my music, professionalism, everything changed was May 28th, 2016. Hmm. When I was given an opportunity to sing at the mall. I didn't know that there were big people there. I just sang, and that was it. Exactly, me too. May 28th. It's, wow. it's, on my, it's on my social media. Wow. I speak about the date. I listened to Bernard Franklin's story, and it actually helped me to relate. The way he, at the beginning, did not understand or anticipate that the Almighty God was going to be in his life to be the best at any rate. See, everything in life is not just fate. Wait. There is something inside our heart which we must remove, and that is hate. Because immediately you start to show love. Then he will give you what he's given us from above. Because he said something as well, which my spirit with that thing did gel. He said that you cannot give what you don't have. And it's not your love to give. It's him that does forgive. So I relate to May 28th. I relate to the fact that it's not just a date. I relate that it's more than just fate. That every time that that date came to his date, <laughs> something happened, a shift. It was like bait. Wait. There was a time that he left music and he tried to be a man. But he didn't know that part of music was part of the plan. So even if I started without the music, trying to express who I am, I decided that music would better the camp. We must never estimate. We must never play a hate. We must always relate to those who always show us hate. Wait, life is more than fish and the bait. Wait, life is more and the things you can to late wait life is more than living life living you must have mercy because you have been forgiven peace unto all mankind peace to all your family and peace to the way that you rewind and peace to all insanity because out of badness sometimes good can actually come we said it here today god bless covid that come why it brought families together those that were about to sever and although it was bad at the end of the day it was clever mankind now realized that we could do things much different and that is why we're here together making sure that it's an instant 
Fast forward to three years after, or two years after, was the day I started entrepreneurship. Wow. That's when my finances took a new turn, and that's what led me to come to Nigeria. Wow. I had moved to Ghana. Yes. I dropped out yes. of school. The pressure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it was all about school, school, school. I wanted to make my father proud that you're not spending a loose amount of money. So I was a first class student doing it, and an opportunity for a scholarship came. And I jumped on it because I was eligible for it. Only for me to go and pick my letter, they told me that I can't. Why? Because I deferred. I'm like, I deferred because I don't have money to pay for school fees. That's why I'm applying for scholarship in the yeah. first place. Yeah. If you had told me that it's going to make me not, not eligible for I won't do it in the first, the first place. So why yeah. wait for me to go? It made to me, the whole process. Yeah. It made me pay money because you said that I have to have something in my So I paid like $400 or so. So I walked out of the office. And I looked at the building and I was in tears. I was wailing. I was like, so, I, so this is me dropping out. Mm. In Ghana. In another man's land. Jesus Christ. What am I going to do? I went back home. I, was in, I, was, I, was, I slept in tears, woke up in tears. Slept in tears, woke up in tears. Because I was like, okay, I can't talk to my father. I'm in another man's land. I can't go back home because I have overstayed my passport. So I can't, it's not the normal fee I will pay. I was just stuck. Hmm. But I didn't stop praying. I don't know how that happened. So I, I, I dived deeper in addiction. Hmm. Every day is wanting God. It was like a back to back. Jesus. Even, look, it's, even thinking about it now, it's, it's tired. <laughs> it's really, really exhausting, you know? Yeah.
was suicidal at some point too. Mm. But what kept me from suicide was my mom. Because she has been through a lot. I had not because the money that they used to send me to Ghana, I helped to hawk the stock fish that we sold mm. to bring me to where yeah. I would yeah, because and she's also dealing with my father's absence. Mm. Not have not speaking or seeing my father for two years. I'm her only son. Right? So I was like, it will really hurt her. I don't want to kill myself and kill her. Mm. You know, let me just carry on. So one time my pastor called me upstairs and said, Do you know that your parents can't take care of you again? Mm. He had not done to me that I was independent. He said, You have to start being responsible. They can't take care of you again. What are you going to do with your life? Mm. It should motivate me, but it made me sad. Like, so now Independence Day, mm. the ones I know that they will settle them, they will give them money, give them go, and start, eh, yeah. go and start life. But one is accidental. I'm like, ah, uh-uh. <laughs> do you understand? In high day, so I went back to my room and I was crying. I was like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I really do with my life in Ghana? I didn't have money to come back to my own country, so I was stuck there. I had to make sense of it. So I was work, working in church. I started going out, trying to know stuff and everything. But then, I was like, I can't sing go. I, t- <laughs> I, can't, I can't sing go. Let me, because in Nigeria, I was going for concerts, you know, so it was, what was like, giving me sen- that joy, okay. So I let, let me start going for concerts. For, so I went for some, but May 28th, I, I remember that day, I just, I saw like an ad, I know that I'm like, okay, let me let me go for this event and just be around music a bit. Let, let me so I had made some money from a few errands I ran. So that was the money I was going to use for strength mm-hmm. <laughs> to go to the place. <laughs> ah Lord. <laughs> See, and God is intentional. Mm. God is intentional about you. It's in retrospect that you begin to understand. So I went. Last morning, I went there. Look, everybody was looking because I looked very dressed. <laughs> <laughs> if, you look, if you see the video, you see, the video is on, is, on, is on Facebook. So they were now, they were trying to set up and everything, and they now said, "If you can sing here, just come and tell us. So we give you the mic, you shows and everything." I was like, so to sing, don't sing, sing, don't sing, sing, because that was the first time I was singing outside church. Yeah. So I just met. Let me, let me, let me try something. I've been rehearsing intentional. By Travis Green. Yeah. So let me just try it. And I sang that day. They had not heard somebody like that before. So we were like, who is this? I finished singing. Everyone was looking at me strange. They were like, okay. There was silence. The yeah. Day clap who everywhere. are you? Because it's like, they are, they are, it's a gospel, so people know themselves. Nobody knew me. <laughs> Nobody knew me there. It was like, when I came down, I was like, please, what's your name? I said, I'm Ben Franklin. I said, oh, okay. I've never had this one like this thing, like, so I was like, okay. So I was feeling somehow, I was like, okay. Was I really... Is, is, did I make a mistake? Is, did I sing it well? They called me again to sing. I sang the second time so they can hear the voice again. And that was it. She can I have a number? Can I have a number? And from that from moment that on... That on, it, it never stopped. It never stopped. It kept going like that, from show after show, from rehearsal after rehearsal, from calls after calls. 